In this video, we're going to download the Big Mac Index, which is from TheEconomist.com, and actually you can see a nice description of this. It was created uh, in 1986 as a lighthearted guide to whether currencies are at their correct level, and it's basically purchasing power parity. It tells you how much a, Ma a Big Mac will cost in various countries. What we're going to do is download the Excel file and then open it up in SPSS. So I'm just going to download it, and uh, we'll come back and upload it. Okay, first I'm going to close this current data set. Now, if you're wondering how on earth you would close something, especially when you click on file and see that close is almost always uh, dimmed out, what you can do is go to the upper right corner and then hit the uh, hit the X button, and then it'll, of course, ask you, to, are you sure you want to do that? And I'll say yes, and then I don't want to save the output from uh, from there. The downside, though, of course, is that if you only have that one file running, you will also close uh, SPSS statistics. But in our case, that's fine. Now, notice the file that we downloaded from before was also uh, an Excel file. It was in XLS format. And in fact, you can see that once SPSS loads by clicking on File and then going to Open, go to Data, and then go to your, uh, your Downloads location. Notice, too, that says by Files of Type will be SAV, and you won't see Excel. But if I select Excel, I can now see by Big Mac file, which I'll open here. When you do that, you'll see a read Excel file dialog box, which you'll need to uh, provide some answers to. And I'm going to leave all of these as default, but notice what it's doing. It will read the variable names from the first row of data. So remember, you have to have a variable, uh, which is, of course, this, and th th it needs to have a name associated with it, which can't have spaces and special characters. Uh, it, it needs to have a name. So we're going to hit OK here and we'll get this screen here so we see country local price dollar and this comes from the header from the excel document so based on what we did before if you don't want to have this underscore displayed on your screen especially when you know clicking this button here it doesn't do anything at all and that's because we don't have any labels set up what you can do is click on the variable view and then under label for say local price you can type in local space price and now if we go back to our data view and turn on uh, our labels you should see a local price but you don't if you want to see a label for a, a variable the only way to do that is to hover the mouse over that column and then you'll see the label appear you if you want the local underscore price to say local space price you really can't do that in fact if you try to do it about as close as you can get well let's let's just let me show you so if i do a capital l local space price look at this i'm going to get an error it says the variable name contains an illegal character and instead it gives me local underscore price so one alternative is to name the put the create the name set the name of the variable to something with a capital letter or something that simply looks a little nicer or as we saw before hover over the column when you're ready to go and once you get into outputting these uh, your data into charts and illustrations then you can be a bit more um, you can make the visuals look better and output nicer looking columns uh, variable names but for now it's just a hover over the uh, the column to get what you're after. That said, though, we if you're wondering why this button has no effect, there's a very good reason for it. If you look at the, for example, value of 55.0, and now you go to local price, which is what that was, and you look at the values, there are no values defined at all. So I would have to put in a value, say 55.0, and put a label of here I am, for example. Here I am. Obviously, this makes no sense in this particular example, but you, I think you'll get the idea. Once you've done that, and now, now you click on this button, you will be able to see the value be exchanged with its label. So essentially, just keep in mind, there are two kinds of labels. You have local underscore price, in other words, the, the label for the column, that is the variable, and then you have a label for each individual data uh, point, data um, score that you have. So these are two separate things.
So that was our Excel file. So now let's say that we want to import a CSV file. And essentially the way you would do this, and really the way we did it last time, was to go to File, Open, and Data, and we selected an Excel document. But really, a better way is to go to File, Import, Data, because you can import the data directly into the existing SAV and not necessarily create an SAV from your imported data. But in any case, File, Import, Data, and then you can choose Excel, or text data or CSV and so on. Now if you have a database then you would click on new query but you'll need to have your ODBC connection set up for that. In this case we're going to do a CSV file and we're also going to select uh, essentially the same data that we had from before but this time it's in CSV format. So I'm going to click on OK or open and notice too that your encoding is UTF-8 here which is sort of which is Unicode and now notice the kind of results we get on this screen. So it says first line contains variable names. That's be familiar from the last uh, from the Excel import. Remove leading spaces from string values. You can of course do that if you like. Remove trailing spaces from string values. Uh, the delimiter between values. That's comma of course because this is a comma separated value of uh, value file. And then the decimal symbol is that a period or is that a comma? The text qualifier and cache data locally and percentage of values that uh, that determine the data type uh, 95. So this is these are essentially the same options that we saw or most of those are the same options that we saw from Excel. But you also get a wizard here if you'd like to run through the wizard uh, this way. So this um, in this case I'm actually going to click on cancel but this should look actually very familiar from if you're if you're used to Excel's import uh, feature but in our case uh, we're going to import data we'll go to CSV select our file and wait for the preview and then essentially click on OK and we get the same values and really the same sort of output as before